Afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Lewis Basketball Network. Welcome back to my channel. It is your boy Lewis, and I am back once again with another banger with yet another video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share this video. Um, it only helps the channel grow. Truly appreciate it, guys. So without further ado, let's get right into this. So I know this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be a little iteration of my couple of last, the last video from when I had talked about how, why Steph Curry, to me, in my opinion, is the best player um, in the NBA and on the Warriors. Um, I know I have said Kevin Durant, you know, he's the better individual player than Steph Curry, but I'm going to throw you some statistics that obviously they don't tell the truth, but they don't tell the whole story, but it's going to, and I'm going to actually further break it down as to why, but here's what I'm going to say. So. Let's look at points per game, ladies and gentlemen. So we know that Kevin Durant is the better individually skilled player than Steph Curry, right? And we have this notion of confusing about the most important to the best player. Now, what I'm going to tell you is, don't you think that the important player, if something is the most important thing, isn't it the main priority? So what I'm saying is, is like, even though Kevin Durant is the best player, is he the main priority? So Steph Curry is the one that defenses go after. So that doesn't that make him the best player on the team? Because he is who everybody goes after. Now, for those who keep saying that the Warriors have ruined the NBA, what the Warriors have done, ladies and gentlemen, is they have created an evolution. Apologize, I got a little noisy in the background. But uh, once again, like... Once again, they created an evolution. And what did they do? They weaponized the three-point shot. They've weaponized the ball movement. They've weaponized the free-flowing offense. They've weaponized the ability to cut to the basket, the ability to set screens, the ability to make a just an awesome display, an awesome show of basketball that they have become arguably the greatest show on earth in today's NBA. And what Steph Curry has done is he has created a culture in the Golden State Warriors. The front office has brought in these high character players and the coaches have coached them to their abilities and they have unleashed these players, of course, especially with Steve Kerr unleashing Steph Curry. And Curry's game has made him a fun player to play with. And his teammates talk, him, talk about him in high regard all the time. You don't really hear a bad thing said about Steph Curry. So this is how crazy Steph Curry and Kevin Durant are when you look at this. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking at points per game. As you can see, James Harden led the league with 36 points a game. You had number two at Paul George at 28 a game. Giannis Antetokounmpo was third at 27.7. Embiid averaged 27 and a half. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Coming in at number five, wait. Stephen Curry, he was fifth in the NBA in scoring at 27.3, okay. Then you have six, you have Kawhi Leonard. Okay. Devin Booker, I didn't know he was seventh in the league in scoring. I knew he was in the 20s, but I didn't know he was that up there. Okay, that's pretty dope. And at eighth, Kevin Durant at 26 flat. Wait. So Kevin Durant's in the top 10 and, whoa. Would you look at this, ladies and gentlemen? Stephen Curry has to defer to Kevin Durant, but Kevin Durant is eighth in scoring and Steph Curry is fifth in scoring. And it's like I said, ladies and gentlemen, if something is the most important thing, isn't it the main priority? Just because you're the best doesn't mean you're the most important. See, when we look at a guy like Michael Jordan, we knew he was not only the best, he was their most important player. Scotty Pippen, uh, like I said, Hall of Famer, top 50 player, really developed his game. But look, that tells you the importance of Michael Jordan because of how he pushed Scotty Pippen in practice to become the player that he became. Scotty had a Scotty had a very good skill set, but he was lacking in a lot of areas in the fishing. A lot of players come in into the NBA um, at times, you know, they have certain games that can, again, translate to the NBA and they have to polish some things before they become this great elite player. But that's why I said that as much as Michael wasn't winning on his own, he helped develop Scottie Pippen along with the coaching, along with everything else. But Michael made him better. He pushed him in practice. And Michael and Scottie have talked about this numerous times. Yeah, all these people want to do is just talk about how, you know, Michael lost in the first round this, the first round that. I'm like, okay, I get all that. 
but he pushed him to practice and he made him an all time into an all time great. Scotty Pippen also put in the work, no question about it. But Michael was there every step of the way, man. We're not talking about in the years that he retired in 93, 94, 94, 94 90, most of 94, 95. We're just talking about when they played together on the court. You know, he was there. And look at Steph Curry. He leads the team in scoring, and he's the second option who defers to Kevin Durant. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. And I want to look at true shooting percentage. Oh, and let's also wait. Before we do that, let's look into player efficiency rating. And this is for this year, ladies and gentlemen. So when we look this year, Curry just falls short out of the top 10 at 24.4. And he's 11th. Kevin Durant, 24.2. Not a wide margin, but it tells you once again, Steph Curry has a slightly higher player efficiency rating than Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant is the best player on the team. And I'm going to say this once again, Kevin Durant is the more individual, better player because he can do things that Steph, Ke Steph Curry can't do. But remember, you're talking about a one-on-one -on -one player in Kevin Durant compared to a guy who can impact an entire team in Steph Curry. Shout out to my man, Meek Mills. There's levels to this. So, so you look at player efficiency rating, right? Curry's higher. Let's look at true shooting percentage. Ladies and gentlemen, Look at this. If we go scroll all the way to Steph Curry, he's just under Giannis Antetokounmpo at 64.1 true shooting percentage. And as I ex have explained before, ladies and gentlemen, true shooting percentage is a combination of two-point field goals, three-point field goals, and free throw percentage. Just shows you how much you actually shoot from the basketball floor. Um, Kevin Durant is all the way down to 14th at 63. Now, if you do the percentages, it's only 1.3 difference, which is not drastic, so it's nothing major. But what I'm trying to show you is, look, Steph Curry is in the top 10 and Kevin Durant is in the top 15. What I'm trying to tell you is it's crazy that Kevin Durant is the better individual player. But you look at these statistics, Steph Curry is above him in true shooting percentage, player efficiency, and points per game, at least for this season. Now, what we're going to do is let's go back to the 2017-2018 season. And we're just going to focus on the three years that they've played together. So we look at, you know, LeBron and all this kind of stuff, minutes, yada, yada, yada. We know all that. So we're going to go to, let me see if I can find it. Let's see. Let's see. Points per game. James Harden. This is James Harden's second consecutive scoring title. So let's look here. Well, in the 2018 season, this is a little bit different. Now, Steph Curry missed, what was it? I believe he missed about, what was it, 31 games in 2018? So Kevin Durant is going to be at 26.4 points per game. Uh, he's six in the NBA. I believe Kevin Durant played almost 70 games that year. So I think that's what happened. And then if we go to if we go to player efficiency rating, and we type it in, look at that. Despite missing 31 games, Steph Curry was fourth in the league in player efficiency rating at 28.2. Kevin Durant was at 26, 26 flat. So Kevin was in both of them in the top 10, but Kevin Durant is in the top 10. Curry's in the top five. Now you can say, yeah, well, they're both technically in the top 10, but you know, I know people tend to do this whole uh, top 10 and top five kind of thing. But look, Stephen Curry, despite missing 31 games, was fourth in the league in player efficiency, in player efficiency rating, and Kevin Durant was sixth. That's, they're both great, unbelievable, but uh, Steph, uh, Steph Curry, 2.2 difference. I mean, that's, that's telling a lot right there. And then we go to true shooting percentage. So look at that. Despite missing 31 games, ladies and gentlemen, Steph Curry led the league in true shooting percentage, and this is a player who gets pounded physically and doesn't get enough foul calls on a daily basis, man, game in, game, game in and game out. Look at that. He led the league in true shooting percentage. Kevin Durant fin rounded out the top 10 at 64, while Steph Curry was at 67.5. And in 2016, Steph Curry's true shooting percentage was actually 
it was the best of his career that year. He was, I think his was a near, near, near 70, uh, 700 uh, true shooting percentage, which was an incredible stat. But look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Curry missed a lot of time. KD was the better scorer. But look, I think Curry was around 25 um, like when he was healthy. But those were guys who played like more than 50, more than 50, at least 60 games in that list. But look, it just shows you how Curry impacts the game. And now we're going to go to 2016, 2017, Kevin Durant's f his first season playing with Steph Curry. So we look here, points per game. That's total points. Okay, Russell Westbrook. Here we go. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Steph Curry rounds out the top 10 in points per game at 25.3. Kevin Durant at 25.1 is 13th. So once again, I show you, ladies and gentlemen, Steph Curry is in the top 10 in points per game for a guy who has to defer to Kevin Durant and is the second option on the team. Think about it. Let that marinate. So then we go... And this is not me being a fanboy. This is not... I'm trying to just show you my point. And I do this. Russell Westbrook led the league in player efficiency rating. Now here you could say it was a little bit different. Kevin Durant led player efficiency rating. He was second in the league at 27.6. And Steph Curry was 14th at 24.6. So it just shows you that Kevin Durant, when it needed to, was given the ball a lot more, and he was able to have a better efficiency rating than Steph Curry. True shooting percentage. This was the one season, other than points per game, did Kevin Durant have a better true shooting percentage than Steph Curry? Steph Curry was in, and look, Steph Curry still was able to round out the top 10 at 62.4, and Kevin Durant was in the top three in 2017 at 65.1. But what doesn't go to show you, it just tells you. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at, the, look at how much, look how much that Steph Curry for a guy who's such a second option, look at the impact that he can still have in true shooting percentage, player efficiency rating, and points per game. So in 2017, in 2019 this year, Steph Curry was in the top 10 or top 5? Because I've told you, 2018, he missed 31 games that year when, they were, um, when the Warriors repeated as champions. And so this is why I'm going to go a little further now. So the reason that I show this stat is because I wanted to show you guys that Steph Curry weaponizes the three-point shot along with the Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry is the guy that defense is focused on. Now, we could talk about, and I've said it before, you know, Kevin Durant is this amazing transcendent seven-footer that is a walking gazelle. But once again, it just doesn't go to show you, and I've said many occasions that Kevin Durant is the better individually skilled one-on-one -on -one player than Steph Curry because Kevin Durant can do things that Steph Curry cannot. But Steph Curry can impact an entire team with his style of play and the system that the Warriors run. I tell you, I'm going to say it once again, in the 2017 NBA Finals, ladies and gentlemen, how many drives to the basket did Kevin Durant have with the fact that J.R. Smith and Kyrie Irving and a lot of the Cavaliers focus so much on Steph and Clay. Like people, it, does, it doesn't tell you how much they were physical with Steph Curry to make sure he didn't go off. Patrick Beverly said in the postseason, who are we going to go after? We're going to make sure we got Steph Curry so that he doesn't get a shot off. Steph Curry is constantly getting hounded. They play physical with him. They try to grab him. Steph Curry's trying to get through screens just to make sure... That's how much attention that people pay. They don't pay attention to Kevin Durant. They don't double Kevin Durant. Now, you could say that they doubled Kevin Durant um, when he was with the Oklahoma City Thunder because, number one, they were a poor spacing team. So when you space them, when you have poor spacing, it's a lot easier for the defense to key in on you and guard you because all we got to do is we don't even have to shrink the floor. It's not like we have to try to shrink the floor. The floor's already shrink. All we have to do is even do the lightest bit of trap and double-team Durant, and it's like, yo, you have a better chance of forcing them to turn the ball over. You force another guy to beat you who's not known to create their own shot, so they have to shoot it to be able to say that they could 
knock down shots effectively, um, but they're not going to get beat by their best player. So, you know, he did that. But coming to the Warriors, and people are saying this whole thing about, you know, oh my goodness, how, and this is why I blame the media a lot, ladies and gentlemen, is what I said, that Kevin Durant and Steph Curry playing together is what these guys don't like. So when Steph Curry is struggling or, oh, look, oh, you see, the Warriors, they need Kevin Durant because Durant is carrying this team. Part of the reason why Durant is carrying is what I told you. Their bench is not as deep as it has been in years. Pre-KD Warriors led the league in bench points both seasons. Ladies and gentlemen, the Warriors are a much better team with Kevin Durant, but the Warriors offense plays so much smoothly and better when he, Steph Curry has the ball in his hands. That's the distinction I just made between the two. I'm going to say that again. The Warriors are a better team with Kevin Durant, but the offense flows much better when Steph Curry has the ball in his hands. I hope you caught that. And then when you look at those stats that I showed you, now people are going to say, well, in the playoffs, Steph Curry, he has a tendency to not show up. Steph Curry is not a leader. Draymond is the leader of the Golden State Warriors. Well, Draymond is the leader, I would say, is the emotional leader of the Golden State Warriors. I would say he's the most vocal leader of the Golden State Warriors on the defensive end of the floor. The quarterback of the defense, the guy who communicates and tells you where a screen is coming, where to help, you know, asking you, telling who you got you know, in terms of who man you got. Draymond impacts the game on that end of the floor. But ladies and gentlemen, how was the spacing created on the offensive end of the floor? Steph Curry. Everybody benefits through Steph's system. Guys can plug in. And it's a, a, obviously, look, it's a testament to also the coaching staff with Steve Kerr and the coaching staff, you know, that run these plays. But it's Curry's activity, his action, his ability to set screens, his ability to slip a screen, his ability to come off pin downs, come off curls, come off screens, his ability to shoot off the dribble, off the catch, drive to the basket if you take away his threes. Notice how I just told you his versatility on the offensive end. And they still pay so much attention to him that it leads to open shots for the other players in the lineup, whether, whether starting or coming off the bench. And who do defenses pay attention to? I'm going to say it again. What's that old saying? That when you want to kill a snake, you cut the head off it? Who's the head of the snake? It's not Kevin Durant. It is Steph Curry. Defense is geared to guard Steph, not KD. If KD's with the Oklahoma City Thunder, the defenses are going to be geared to stopping Kevin Durant because he's the best scorer. But on this Warriors team, yes, Kevin Durant is the best individual player on the team. But who do the defenses focus on? Not KD, because with Steph Curry, KD gets single coverage. I've said that time and time again. This is no disrespect to Kevin Durant at all. He's an amazing player. He's one of my favorite players in the league. But that's why you have to look at context, ladies and gentlemen. And I said it, man. When you, you look into the seed of the fruit, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. They're both amazing players. But it just goes to show you. Look at the effect that the bench mob has. Because it's easy to say, well, Kevin Durant is doing everything. The, the match is not doing their job. You have to understand that these guys are a little bit of more specialists. Yeah, they can do some, they can do some things on the floor, but, they're, but they're, they benefit off of the way Curry plays, not much of how Kevin Durant plays. And I've said before that when Kevin Durant plays in the system, he is actually more efficient and more dangerous when he takes less shots. Now, we know that KD could get 40, 50 on any given night. Yo, that's a, that's a gimme. Did y'all remember in the 2018 NBA Finals, and I think it was in game two. I think Curry hit nine threes in that game, which was an NBA Finals record. Kevin Durant had the quietest 33 points I've ever heard. The focus was on Steph Curry's three-point barrage. But Kevin Durant was an efficient 10 of 14 from the field and had the quietest 33 points that you will ever hear. And I said, how is a walking gazelle like Kevin Durant scores 33 points on 14 shots and shoots 71%? I can imagine what his true shooting percentage was that night. But the talk was about Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant was able to quietly get 33 points 
on 14 shots. That tells you his greatness, but it also tells you the spacing that the Warriors have and how defense is geared toward Steph Curry. That's why this whole important and best notion, these words, is very difficult to always give an explanation on it. Kevin Durant is the best individual player, but Steph Curry is the most important. And I said, when the most important thing is your main priority, it means it's the thing, which tells you, which tells me, that's why I said, in my opinion, Steph Curry is the best player on the team. Now, what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm actually going to come back and I'm actually going to do a video on Steph Curry and Kevin Durant's NBA Finals. And I, it's, what's going to tell you is um, I'm going to say that why this notion of Curry not performing in the finals is such a misnomer and why it's ridiculous to say because Curry has performed. The only time he really didn't perform was 2016, but I'm going to come back with a video on that. And I'm also going to do a video on uh, LeBron's all-defensive selection, so stay tuned for that. But like always, this is your boy Lewis with another one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of what I was talking about. So anyways, um, before I wrap up, the Warriors did not ruin the NBA. They didn't. Kevin Durant chose to go there. The Warriors, they just basically did what they were supposed to. And getting DeMarcus Cousins, DeMarcus Cousins did not want to take the deal, some of the deals that the other teams were offering, and some teams didn't even offer. And he took less money to go join the Golden State Warriors. I mean, what, the war, that's, uh, the, that's the Warriors' fault? No, that's other teams for failing to do a job of trying to try to get DeMarcus Cousins. And remember, DeMarcus Cousins was coming off an Achilles injury. And I, that, that's the thing. And look at where Cousins is right now. He has a quad injury. <laughs> So, you know, and it is what it is, man. But it just shows you the importance of the Golden State Warriors and how they've built their team the right way. And their system is just predicated, man, on what they do best. And people hate the success um, that they've garnered over the years. This is what's made them champions. People have said that they're the luckiest team ever, uh, especially the 2017 team. But the 2017 Warriors, in my opinion, that's their that's their best. That is their best championship team, in my opinion, the 2017 Golden State Warriors. Um, because it was a dominant team. People are talking about Kawhi Leonard and 